episode is sponsored by TXCitizen.com, local New Braunfels news that's exclusively online and completely free. Also sponsored by the Texas Gamers Lounge, now with two locations in San Marcos and Austin. Both locations feature all-you-can-play pinball, arcades, modern and retro consoles for only $9.99. Follow them on social media by visiting TexasGamersLounge.com. Hey, Tony. Yeah? What are we going to need for this review? Guns. Lots of guns. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Pop Culture Geekery. I'm Joe Solis, and today I've got another guest host. This is Tony Pettis, one of the owners of the D-Pad. How are you doing today, Tony? Doing great. How are you? Doing pretty good. So we just got back from watching the new movie, John Wick 3, Parabellum. So we're still pretty uh, pumped from watching it. I mean, yeah, it's like... Jazz. Yeah. It's like coming down from a high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like almost one in the morning, and I don't even, I'm not even tired yet, but it'll hit me in a second, so... <laughs> But um, but anyway, yeah. So we just wanted to kind of you know give you our review. It's going to be no spoilers because uh, we just want to encourage you guys to go watch it this weekend. Uh, especially those of you that have been on the John Wick bandwagon. I haven't been. I actually played catch up recently here. I watched part one and I literally watched part two right before we went to go watch this. So, but you've been watching since the beginning, right? Yeah, I'm a huge fan of the series. Uh, I have a couple issues of the comics, which I was a fan of as well. Uh, but I watch one and two on a pretty regular basis. I try and watch them like monthly. I, it's great. I love the series. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. <laughs> yeah, watching them monthly, but definitely a yeah, huge fan. For sure. um, but yeah. Um, you know, so I'll just give you my quick impressions of part one and two. You know, when I, I, I like I said, I watched them way after their, their popularity had already spiked. Um, so I don't know. I was kind of, maybe I was getting to the hype or, you know, when I watched part one, I was like, yeah, that was good. But, you know, I, I, I don't know. I guess maybe I was expecting more because everybody just built them up so much. And then when I watched part two, I was like, well, this is a little bit better, you know. Uh, and actually, one of my friends kind of warned me about it. He was like, well, part two, this starts kind of losing the the realisticness. And I was like... Actually, I kind of liked that. And then I think you said here in part three, they just ramp it up even more. Yeah, they just they keep progressing in every movie. Like the first movies, uh, it's kind of like how he says at the beginning, Winston does to John in the first movie. He's like, you can't just dip your toe in, John. You have to like, you can't just dip your toe in and get out. Once you're in, you're back into it. So I feel like the first movie is kind of like that, like John dipping his toe into it. And then you just get into this wild ride that part three is at right now. Uh, So... Yeah, it definitely escalates like from movie to movie. Part one's great. Part two gets crazy. Part three is just, it, it's insane. Yeah, it, it's been wild. Yeah, I was going to say insane's a good way to describe part yeah. three. <laughs> um, you know, so like like I said, without spoiling anything, I mean, let's just keep it simple. Like the, obviously in the past you've seen John fight with knives. You know, there's been gunplay in martial arts, but I feel like each of those aspects had a, a chance to shine more in certain scenes uh what do you think about that yeah 100 percent. it's like uh keanu reeves just keep keeps getting more and more crispy in mm-hmm. like every movie like in the first movie he was great the second movie he was very fluid mm-hmm. and this movie he just kind of snaps with every move that he makes like the gunplay is just as good as the previous two the martial arts is probably even more uh clearer to see in the third one uh you see a lot of uses of judo aikido um all sorts of stuff even stuff like throwback stuff from like jackie chan or bruce lee movies like he does a lot of martial arts play uh, so yeah, it's really, really, really good. Yeah, and one of the things too I noticed is like, um, you know, people were kind of laughing too because it's it's getting to that point of almost ridiculousness. But to me, I was enjoying that. Like, yeah. I thought this is awesome. Like, just just the, especially the knife the knife fight at the beginning. You'll see. I mean, you guys will see when you watch it. It's just crazy. And there's some brutal, <laughs> brutal things in this yeah. one. Yeah, this is probably one of the more brutal of the three. I, mm-hmm. I think out of all three of them, John Wick really just, John Wick 3 really just hypes it up as far as mm-hmm. brutalness. Uh, so if you're kind of squeamish, you know, I'd be careful with that. But um, yeah, all the martial arts was really ramped up. And the comedy was great, too. I was really mm-hmm. surprised at that. Um, it, it gives you like kind of like a nice 
breath in between all the action that you're getting it, it's crazy what they're able to make funny in the third yeah. movie like you find yourself laughing you're like why am i laughing at this i question my sanity why am i laughing at this uh, so yeah, yeah yeah the comedy was really a nice break in between all the action which was again you won't expect that in an action movie especially something grimdark like john wick yeah. uh, so it was really funny um yeah, it, it's just a great, man, uh, I'm still coming off of it. <laughs> I know, and it's hard to not talk about specifics, but, uh, you know, one thing I guess I didn't realize uh, in the first movie, because that's when the doctor showed up to help him, right? Mm-hmm. And then he came back here, uh, is that we had a little bit of a Matrix reunion here, because we had him, you know, we had Lawrence Fishburne, and that's Randall Duke Kim, I guess, played the doctor, who also played the key master Correct. in the Matrix, so... And then um, I know there was some other ones you pointed out, too. Um, yeah, it, it's definitely a, a star-studded cast. Um, you have a lot of people. Um, you have the person who plays Oswald Cobblepot from Gotham is in the movie. Uh, Morticia Adams, very classic actress. Um, one of the main um, villains that you see in the trailer, uh, he's an assassin. Uh, he's from, I recognize him from Iron Chef America, mm-hmm. but I think you recognize him from another movie? Yeah, so I recognize him from a movie called Brotherhood of the Wolf, which he kind of played this kind of ninja Frenchman. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> yeah, but, that's yeah. a pretty rad character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that character's really cool. Uh, if you haven't seen that, watch that movie. It's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, the guy from Game of Thrones is in there, Brom. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I can't remember the actor's name. Uh, Jeremy Flynn. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he plays uh, a character in the movie as well. Very excellent character. Uh, they did a really good job with the characters in this movie. Yeah, but I I, I got to show my age here with the actor you were talking about, Mark uh, DaCostas. De, De yeah. Uh, he, I know him from a movie from 1993 called Only the Strong, <laughs> where he introduced me to the fighting style capoeira, because that's what he was in that, that's what he was using in that movie. Oh my God. Have you ever seen that? I have not seen that movie, <laughs> but I know of the martial arts style, yeah. which is great. It sounds like it's a fantastic movie. <laughs> well, it's probably got some late 80s, early 90s music, I'm sure, that to go along with it. Yeah. Like, yeah, that 80s martial arts movie feel. I'm sure it's actually probably pretty great. (laughs) Yeah. But um, let's see. What else can we say about this movie without spoiling anything? Um, Uh, It's very fast paced. Um, Mm -hmm. They borrow. uh, They do a lot of homages to a lot of other movies uh, Mm -hmm. that you might be fans of. So keep an eye out for really fun Easter eggs. Uh, Don't kind of really limit yourself as far as anything. If something pops out to you, try and remember it for later on and look it up. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because they do a a really lot of uh, throwbacks to a lot of cool shows and stuff like that. Uh, there are certain scenes in particular that are just really well shot. Um, oh yeah, it's yeah. The a lot of the cinematography was fantastic. Um, the just the locations too they picked, and it, even just the color palettes of different areas that you're moved to from area to area. And without getting too specific, there's certain areas where you'll see John Wick walk into a room, and you'll immediately start thinking like, "Oh my God, what is he going to do inside of this room?" Yeah, like you're <laughs> yeah. like, "Oh my gosh." Uh, yeah, there's a couple of parts in the beginning where I was like, "Oh no, please don't fight here." <laughs> yeah, you're, it's, it's the setup, definitely. I, well, that's the kind of the funny thing too. I started thinking about the fighting in this one. It almost felt like a video game, you know, because it it's just like well, obviously he's famous for his headshots, yeah. you know. And I, you saw on the trailer too, you know, you got Halle Berry's character, which I think she did an excellent job. Yeah. But she's got the dogs in there, which to me were like uh, almost like a summon from Final Fantasy or yeah. something. You know? Yeah, for sure. Her dogs. Well, they even started using them in like Call of Duty and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, like having her her dogs there present a really interesting thing for the Mm -hmm. movie and it's cool to see how they use them which Mm -hmm. i thought was really really interesting uh but halle berry did great yeah i 100 loved her character and i thought she really kept up with keanu reeves as far as doing her fair share of the work uh in what they were doing or what they were trying to get done uh they introduced her character really well um uh, there's always a every time they introduce a character into this movie series there's always a kind of gravitas that comes with them like anytime you meet a character you're, you're like oh wow this person has some backstory some history and they don't um they don't force it down your throat they just kind of explain it really quickly and then they they keep on with it which i think they did a good job with her 100 percent. yeah and i looked up parabellum did you look it up it means the word itself no yeah. it means prepare for war and he, and he actually says it there towards the end. For yeah. like, there just in case the audience didn't know. Yeah. And let's do a name drop. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, oh man, you were just talking about something that made me think uh, about Halle Berry or the dogs. Yeah. Or um, like the Easter eggs. 
Yeah, there's just so much stuff. I, I've yeah. lost track yeah. of it. Well, there's but... also so much stuff without, yeah. like, when you really don't want to spoil it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like the spoiler version of this, it, it would be insane just because there's so much stuff. Uh, there's so much lore in the series. Oh, like, that's what it was. Yeah. I wanted you to talk about the lore. Yeah, <laughs> if you guys really pay attention to John Wick Part 1 and Part 2, there's a gradual increase in the lore that you get from the series. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have the main staple, which is the Continental, which is the hotel they operate in. You have all the rules. You have the fact that there's a lot of hitmen that stay in the Continental. Uh, so they just keep world building. Like from part one, you get, okay, it, it's kind of a crazy, they got their own currency. There's Hitman. There's this hotel. They all hang out at. Okay. I guess that's kind of cool. They have bulletproof like suits. All right. That, that's cool. It gets kind of weird. Part two, they ramp it up and it's like, holy cow, they have access to all this crazy stuff. They have underground map makers. They have all this crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. And then part three just ramps it up again. They keep introducing more and more stuff and it's just insane. It's like, who's writing this? It's just wild. Like, are you guys writing this thinking you're going to put out a book series, an anime, like (laughs) you even said? Like there's so much world building, even in part three, uh, that's pretty wild. So pay attention. Go back, watch the movies, kind of keep track of the lore. And really like throw yourself into the series because you'll enjoy three that much more if you kind of pick up on it. Yeah, and and I'm I'm surprised that you know I guess we're spoiled by you know well it's a trilogy so we should be wrapping it up but no they, yeah. I mean there there's already talks of of a part four so I'm just like yeah Keanu's not done just like Wick uh, it's like you can't stop him or the character they, yeah. they just keep pulling in for more <laughs> the the guy just can't stop uh, I, I really yeah the, it's been a great movie and. Um, yeah, it's definitely open ended at the very least. I like to say that, and I'm pretty sure there already have been talks of more. Yeah. Uh, it's just been doing so well. I, I want to say it even got pretty good reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, yeah. I might have saw like a clip of that right before I saw the movie. Uh, so it, mm-hmm. it seems it's getting great reviews. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if there, is there anything else? If not, we should probably just go ahead and give our ratings. I usually do a scale of one to ten. One so. to ten. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't think there's anything else we can touch on without yeah. being spoilery. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, do you want to go first on your rating? Sure. Um, so like I said, I, I, one and two, I probably would have kept them both at like seven out of ten because you know. But this one, uh, I was feeling definitely eight out of ten. Just yeah. solid. It was enjoyable. Uh, I I actually enjoyed listening to your reactions to stuff. <laughs> it's like when, especially when brutal things happen, yeah, it's like, like you're uh, you're screaming over here, and yeah. I'm just like, all right, so this is fun now. So so what about you? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to say uh, probably at least uh, an eight out of ten as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, if anything, that's kind of what that's kind of what how I feel about the series. Like I feel mm-hmm. like the series uh, knows what it is. Mm-hmm. Like it's kind of a throwback to old action movies. So I kind of feel like all of them have been like eight out of tens. So like I've never, I've never really loved it so much where I'm like, oh, 10 out of 10. Yeah. Cause <laughs> it knows what it is. It's not going to win any Academy Awards. It's yeah. not going for like the best script. Like it's an action movie. You know what you're getting into. It's kind of a throwback or uh, an homage to old action movies. So I feel like all of them have been an eight out of 10 for me. Uh, and, and I would rank this one there too. Um, maybe on the nine out of 10 yeah. but it's hard just because yeah. they really did a good job on the lore with the third one uh but the first two were just so good uh so i'd say an eight out of ten as well cool all right well i think we've uh, hyped you guys up enough so definitely go watch it this weekend um so just want to say thank you to everybody who subscribed so far um if you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing uh, if you like this video please hit like uh, we started posting all our social media links in the description of the video so please follow us there because we post a lot of extra things like trailers and movie news and things like that uh, that we don't get to talk about here on the show so uh, thanks tony for coming on and thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time <laughs>